Hey guys, Chris and the Ultimate Recycler. Uh, welcome back to the channel. This is part two of the, what are we going to call this series? The old house clean out series. There's an older house in, in town locally that uh, we've just got to go ahead to clean up. Um, the lady was going to get a skip in and throw a lot of the stuff out. We've basically said we'll clean the whole job up for you and you'll probably get some cash that hasn't been decided. We'll work that out, but she was just grateful that she didn't have to deal with it. We loaded up in episode one and got a bit of stuff out of the yard and out of a little old shed there. So I'll show you what we've got. And there's a few things that are gonna stay home here. So this is basically um, shed bits and pieces, some garden stuff. Uh, there's a little blue cupboard up there. A couple of other bits, there's a couple of wheelbarrows. Uh, one of them will probably stay here and I'll show you why in a minute. Those old bench seats there, I don't think they're overly old, but they're, they are cast iron and uh, Christine has decided that she might like to do them up as a project because she did up a chair one other time and it came up great. There's some tools and general stuff out of the shed. Uh, fishing reel, I didn't see that. These are uh, from a early Hoover vacuum cleaner. As a little option, when you bought your vacuum, you got a little spray gun attachment. I don't know how well they sprayed. I've never used them. Uh, they don't know if they have a market, maybe $5 each. There's a gas stove, uh, just a camping one, and quite a lot of uh, garden utensils. Uh, and in the front of the van, we have some other stuff we're going to keep. Christine's here with me. Hi, Hello. all. And we're going to keep this little bird bath. The stand has just gone over into the garden. And these pots, there's a, I think there's another pot behind the blue one. I mean, that's a great, beautiful blue glazed pot. It'll probably go really well at our Airbnb in the garden out the back. So we always use pots. They're fairly expensive to buy if you've got to go off to a landscape supplies or a nursery and buy them. This was uh, some spout hangers. Uh, that was a better fuel can that was in the shed. It's one gallon. Uh, it's, I think it's got a bit of fuel in it. It's probably going to be about a $20 can, that one. And we also got a few boxes of old film, film canisters or reels. Uh, 16 millimetre. And they are recordings of something. We don't know what. We're going to have to do some research. What does this one say? Oh, I can't even really work that out. You guys can probably read that. Lauren Patterson, Bruno Roll. Okay. Right. And they've all got film in them. And I can't do that one-handed. Can you open that? With your thick gloves on. <laughs> Oh, it's taped. Oh, it's taped. That's why. That taped. <laughs> so they have got films in them. And I think I have a a, um, a projector to actually play them. So that might be one video in this series. We'll have a look what's actually in these. So the films look in reasonable condition. Well, oh, those look unused. Yeah. Oh, okay. They might be blanks as such. Yeah. I'll have to check all that out. Wouldn't it be great if we discovered some of the early Beatles recordings or what did you say earlier today? Uh, Doctor Who. Oh, one the of the missing Doctor, Doctor Who episodes. Who wow. I don't think so, but it's going to be a bit of fun having a look anyway. Okay, that stuff can stay in the van until Friday. We'll probably get some more stuff out of the house before then. Uh, and this stuff can go back in. I've got a large extension cord can go in my scrap copper wire bin. We have a, it looks like a dog's bed. So I guess Coco can use that. This wheelbarrow is going to go in the front garden to match the other ones that Christine has scattered around our front yard. I think there's one over there as well with succulents in and they look great. This uh, bird bath also came from this place. We just took that out of the van before. And these two garden seats can probably go into the garden at our Airbnb. So I think Christine's planning to fix those up. She may even do a video on it like she did on this one quite a long time ago and it looks great on our front veranda. So uh, if I can find the video, I'll link that one above now. And this other little rough looking homemade bench seat will be uh, great amongst the plants in the Airbnb as well, I think. So we get a, a fair bit of nice garden stuff from doing other people's houses and a lot of old rustic stuff, which we love having around too. So a lot of garden tools, I don't think we need any of those. So those can all go back to the shop to be sold, the uh, whipper snipper or grass trimmer there, I think it's probably a Ryobi one, is it? It looks like a Ryobi. Uh, I might take that to the workshop and give it a bit of a check over. Maybe we'll do a quick video on that too, just to assess its condition and see if we can get it running. 
so that will do today we'll be back back at the house in a few days to uh, start packing up inside and there's a little bit more in the sheds i've got to pick up the lawn mowers as well and again we'll probably do some videos on those just checking them out they might make quick and uh, hopefully entertaining videos for you guys i better put this stuff away we're running out of daylight it's the next day and I'm back out here. I think I should sort some of the stuff out of the van or at least get it ready to put in the shop rather than just take boxes of messy stuff to the shop because I'll probably have to bring it home again. So let's sort out these two boxes. I'll take them down to the workshop and we'll go through and do a little bit of an unboxing. I have cleaned up the BP can. It cleaned up very well. I think we'll put, um, I think we'll put $25 on it in the shop. Uh, the stuff at the front I will leave in the van because they can just go straight into the shop. Uh, we'll chain the table up out the front and maybe the wheelbarrow. So I'm thinking at the moment probably 20 or $25 each on those. The wheelbarrow is not very good and it has got a very old flat tyre. One of the handlebars was bent and I've straightened that up. So around about $50 for the pair, that table and the barrow. The blue cupboard, pot cupboard, we, I thought when I first saw it about 30 or 40 I'm still thinking about that. We'll do a price list, of course, for this deal so we can keep track of things. This homemade ladder, we might just put $10 on. I'll go through these garden tools in a second as well. Uh, I don't think there's anything we need to keep here. Uh, what else was there? Oh, that just that cane hamper type basket. Don't think it's very good. It might be just a giveaway. So really, we've just got a couple of boxes to go through and unbox and maybe just see what's in the garden tools. Let's do that now. This one is a army disposals type i wonder if it's lost the shovel part normally they have a shovel and a pick but maybe that's all this one had uh, and the pick part looks like it's cracked on both sides there so i think it's only a cheapie it's certainly not military i think it's just made to look like an army one is there any marks on it uh actually it says taiwan on that collar so i'd say 1980s army disposal store cheap item and given that it's broken or near broken uh, i think that probably might even just go in the dollar box at the shop these old hedge trimmers someone has welded some heavy lumps of gold water pipe on them uh, so they're probably scrap but we might try them in the one dollar box as well uh, there's a i don't know what that's made up for hooking down outside blinds or something I think that can really, it's really just a garden stake, so that might just be firewood. And this uh, is a mattock, and it looks a pretty good one. Now, I did have a customer in the shop recently asking me for a mattock, so I think that might suit his purposes. Probably going to get about 10 to $15, unless it's got a brand on it. If it's a Trojan or a Cyclone or something, I'd ask a bit more. I don't know, the handle looks pretty good. So maybe $20, I'll give it a quick wash up and we'll check that. The digging fork has a steel handle that's been welded on it. And it still looks in pretty good condition. Now these old digging forks are great. You'll see that the tines, the tines are still nicely aligned. Unlike the cheap digging forks you buy today where they bend very easily. These are spring steel and really they, uh, they dig very well and you can lever out things like lever very hard soil without fear of uh, bending. In fact, they almost spring rocks over the fence when they get underneath something, give us some leverage. So it's a good quality one, but it has been welded up. Other than the handle, it looks like the top of it's been welded as well. We might just go $10 on that. Someone will get a good buy for 10 bucks. A, a pick. It looks like almost an old miner's pick with a very short piece on the back. Uh, because you didn't have a lot of room to swing a pick when you were down the mine. Not sure. It may indeed be branded as well. It's quite a good handle on it still. So that's probably going to be at least $10, may even be $20. We'll give that a quick wash up as well. Uh, the fishing rod is a fiberglass. It's a Jarvis Walker, which were quite a good rod. Uh, it's still got the eyelets on it. It looks like it comes apart in the middle. So that's actually still quite a good rod. Now, there were some fishing reels. I must have put them somewhere. They may be in one of these boxes. So we might even see if a reel matches up on that. But I think that's going to be at least a $20 or $30 fishing rod. It's vintage. It is fiberglass. It's not cane. But uh, it's a vintage rod. And Jarvis Walker were quite a good brand. 
The shovel looks like it's seen better days. Very well worn at the bottom here. So we might just put that out at $5. It looks like it was a Trojan, so it's probably a pretty good brand one, but it's well worn. And we often have garden utensils out the front at $5 a pick, and it's amazing what sells. This is a, a smaller handle, probably like a post hole shovel. It's got an S on it. No brand at the top. So it's got the T handle. It's actually in not bad condition. So I'm guessing that's like a post hole shovel or maybe you're digging a drain. It's quite narrow anyway. So well, that might be $10. I think it's in pretty good condition. So it's amazing how much value we're going to get out of these. That was our piece of firewood. A couple of garden rakes look okay, but the handles aren't very good. So they'll be $5 each. These uh, three tined hose are quite good. This one's clearly very modern. You can still see the remains of a barcode there, but that's got a good handle. I think we'll probably get 10 for that. And this garden digging fork has got a steel handle. It's actually very heavy and the tines aren't so flash on this one. Don't know what they've been trying to do with that, but is it worth trying to straighten the tines? Maybe I will. We'll see if we can straighten those up. We might then get $5 for it. And the last one's just a single hoe. We'll put it in the $5 section, but I don't like my chances of selling that one. All right, let's get these boxes down to the workshop. Okay, let's whip through these boxes and see what we got. Now, these are Hoover vacuum cleaner accessories. They're a, uh, a Venturi type spray bottle. I don't know anyone that's ever used them, whether you could use them for spray painting or, or uh, maybe misting out uh, insecticide or something i don't know i've seen lots of them over the years uh, i think i've had them in the shop at about five dollars each so i'm going to go the same on these i don't expect them to sell super quickly but you never know so five dollars each there here we have a new um, pad bolt or barrel bolt as they call it with the screws and the little fitting that goes on the other side of the the latch so probably just in the one dollar box some tin snips these always sell pretty well they feel like they're in pretty good condition in fact i don't really think they've had very much work at all don't know if they oh they have got a brand well they've got the name taiwan so again probably 1980s you see a lot of taiwanese stuff they're going to be reasonable quality they certainly feel like they'll guillotine well might get ten dollars for those the old cement trowel's pretty grotty. We'll just put in the, in the $1 box. I think I'm going to have a special large $1 box for a lot of this sort of stuff. Here's a cold chisel with a, a hand protector if you're a particularly bad shot with a hammer. Um, yeah, must have been an accessory for it. I don't think the chisel itself is anything flash. There's the remains of a paper sticker on there, so it's not that old. Quite blunt. It's been used in concrete because it's actually got concrete still on it just in the dollar box. Again, we like to move this stuff fairly quickly, so I don't mind putting fairly good stuff in the dollar box from time to time. A sturdy tape measure made in Korea, but it looks in very good condition. We have inches and feet on that side and centimeters and meters on that side. So um, how long is it? Measuring tape, it doesn't say. It might be a 10 or 20 metre, might even be a 50 metre. Doesn't say, it's just a fibreglass tape. Anyway, that just needs a wash, it's in good condition. We should get at least 10 for that. Now we have a bit of hardware in here, including these little latches. These are the sort of latches that you used to have on the sides of old utilities where the tornado cover clipped over and you turned the little latch I don't know if these are automo automotive ones. There's a few of them in there. That one's not real flash. We also have some some tech screws. So I'll put I'll sort out the hardware because there's a few other tins of it and put it into jars just to see what we've got. There's a jar with some large washers in it. What's in this bag box? Um, air ring fastener gun. Oh, actually these look like staples yeah there's a whole box of large staples but we don't have the gun here for them or the applicator or the stapler i guess you'd call it we'll see what else turns up 
little corner bracket, corner brace, so there might be more of them, yes there they are, so the packets just come apart, more hardware, some little nails, that's a shoe stretcher, um, where's it made, made in England, so it's an adjustable shoe stretcher, that's pretty cool, we'll clean that up, we could get five dollars for that I would say, Plenty of hardware, more nails in there. Some more nails. Uh, a heavy duty hacksaw blade there. Probably just in the scrap. Didn't feel very sharp. More nails. And more nails. We have a pinch bar or a jimmy bar. Looks like it's been welded up at that end. So we'll just put that in the dollar box. If it doesn't sell for a dollar, it can go in the scrap bin. A uh, heavy punch that's been used and abused, so that can go in the scrap bin. A little press spanner, no value there really. One of these multi wrenches, uh, quite rusty on one side, probably just in the dollar box as well. Paint scraper, yep, lots for the dollar box. File doesn't feel very good either. A large scraper, not in very good condition. Oh, this is alright, a meat cleaver. Um, we'll clean up this side. It'll be interesting to see where it was made. But we're going to get at least 10 or $20 for that. It could well be a German made one or an English one. So, yeah, blade looks in pretty good nick. You often see these where they've been mushroomed out along the top, where people have used them as a, as a splitting wedge and hammered the top with a hammer. This one's not too bad. So we'll clean that one up for sure. Lots more general hardware. They look like tacks. More nails, just lots of nails in the bottom of this, jars of them, mixture in that one, lots of nails. I think I'll make a whole box and just put all the nails in one box and maybe just have $5 a lot. This is clearly the nail bucket. Oh, here I have some staples and some old wood screws bit more hardware there little box here self-drilling expansion fasteners oh okay interesting oh these these might have been ram set ones are they ram set doesn't give a brand terrier but these may have gone in a ram set gun or like a uh, some sort of nail gun because you have the cartridges here and i think that it probably fired them into concrete so that you had a, a stud sticking out of the concrete. We might put them, I don't know what we'll do with those. Maybe in a box of assorted hardware. Some random nuts and bolts in that one. And a rather rusty concreter's trowel again, another one for the $1 box. So very little value in this one. Oh, hang on, here's a chisel. That looks nice and sharp too. Yeah, we'll certainly clean that one up. That's going to be better than a dollar. So we did get a couple of good things. So I think the meat cleaver is the best. Uh, I'll go through the other box quickly. And then I'll sort them all out. Here we have a mitre box. Um, possibly even just a homemade one. Doesn't look in very good condition. I think that can just go in my firewood pile. A concreter's float, just like a trowel basically. A dollar box again, little attachment that goes in your drill for sanding, again in the dollar box. These concreters tools were not well looked after. You're always supposed to clean the concrete off before it sets. Little wire wheel, yep, a lot of stuff for the dollar box here. Oh, here's a carpenter's rule, we get these quite often. A sturdy brand, made in Hong Kong, so probably 1970s or so. Looks in reasonable condition. The, um, the print's good to read on both sides. A little bit of a split to the timber there. But I think we'll get $10 for that. We'll clean that up. A little tomahawk or a, uh, a hatchet. Very rusty. In fact, it's clearly been lying out in the garden or something and been forgotten about. It's mushroomed over on the side, so someone's used it as a wedge. And even if it did have a brand on it, I'm sure we wouldn't be able to read it. It's badly pitted. 
So unfortunately, that's probably not much more than scrap metal. We have some tenon saws here. Not very old ones. Um, doesn't feel like the teeth are much good. And as we've discussed on some videos recently, where you can see the line around where the handle goes indicates much more recent manufacturer. So thanks for all those that have helped me with that. So it's pretty clear there's a line around there how it was mass produced. I probably think that's going to just go in the dollar box again and someone else can clean it up. This one's probably even more modern. We have a plastic handle. We have Phillips head screws. Uh, it's a fair chance it's not going to be a good brand. So again, probably the dollar box for that one. And a, I don't know if that's been broken off or not. That's quite an old handle, and you can see that it's much more rounded where your hand goes. That's actually a nice handle. It hasn't broken off at all. I think that's worth a clean. And if only as a decorative, very old saw, we will at least get $5 for it, I think. Uh, a little garden scratcher, just in the dollar box again. A rat tail file, again, dollar box. A uh, combination square, a Stanley one, but it's very rusty on the, yeah, you won't be able to read those graduations on there at all. Otherwise, it's actually not in bad nick, it just hasn't been looked after. It's still got the bubble in there, the spirit level part of it. So, USA made Stanley, we'll put that in a dollar box too, purely because I couldn't be bothered cleaning it, and someone will grab that, I'm sure. Uh, what are these? They look like part of an exercise machine. Whether they're the handles on some sort of rowing machine or they're the foot pegs for something. And now that I think of it, there might have been some sort of exercise machine leaning up against the wall or near the window in that old shed. So, But I don't think it was any good. So this is probably just going to be scrap metal. And the last thing in this box is actually quite a good one. It doesn't look much, but that's a spark plug tool for an early Victor lawnmower. And these things, I'm not sure if that's the original wire or not, but they normally bring about $50 from the uh, lawnmower collectors. So we may have to throw that one on eBay. It's a little bit knocked around, and I don't think that's right. I think it's either been bent or it's been... And other pieces made up for it, although it does fit very well. Yeah, well, we might put it in the shop for $20 or something. But yeah, nice find that one. That's the end of our box. So the box can go in the recycle bin. And uh, we'll sort this big pile of mess out. Now, before we get back to the notepad, a couple more things to mention. I did take this uh, line trimmer, a whipper snipper. It is a Roby. I took that out of the van and the electric hedge trimmer. We'll check those and uh, see if we can get them running and saleable in perhaps another video. We'll do that shortly. The fishing rod cleaned up really nicely, actually. It's in very good condition. It's got all the stickers on there. It's uh, the Jarvis Walker San Remo. So I'm pretty, yeah, pretty happy with my $30 appraisal on that. I think we'll get that pretty easily. A little uh, metal table here, nothing special, maybe just $10. And I gather this is a fire pit or maybe a It'd be a small one or maybe a pot plant holder again we'll probably just put 10 on that to move it on uh, this was in the back of the van and i think it was for an extension cord but that part is like a trouble light so we can still sell that but the spool itself i don't think is any good it's just basically a plastic spool so i don't know we might get ten dollars for that or they can buy led ones these days probably more popular so maybe we might just go five dollars and the basket here, I think we will have as a giveaway, and there's just a few old towels, which I'll use in the shed. The uh, garden tools, I cleaned up the better ones. Well, that was actually not a better one. That was the damaged digging fork, but I managed to straighten the tines okay. This is a, a quite an old pick, and I think it is a miner's pick. It only has a J on one side. I couldn't see a brand anywhere else, but it's certainly quite an old one. I think we'll go 25 on that, maybe even 30 and the Matic is actually branded, and I think I said either a, a Trojan or a Cyclone. Well, it is indeed a Cyclone. 
so I think we'll probably go 25 or something on that one too you can see where the sticker was so it's not that old and I think you would probably be paying $60 plus for something like that in a hardware now I'm not totally sure there's a little uh, fold up camping stool there we might just get five for so there we go um, we've processed everything in the van that can go into the shop on Friday there is a few things in the front section which we'll get to in another video and uh, now let's get back to the notepad okay let's get back to the good gear in the shed here and the notepad and we have a whole tub that I'm going to put out this weekend at a dollar each and I'm pretty sure they'll all go probably the first day it's good value but we like to move stuff on quickly I didn't have to wash or clean up any of this uh, all the hardware I actually put in one box and I'm just going to sell a whole lot at ten dollars so someone should see some pretty good value there we put everything that was basically hardware items lots of nails of course these packets um, so that's all 10 bucks the whole doll, whole box there which um, hopefully someone should see as great value the other stuff uh, this stuff I cleaned up and the best of it was the meat cleaver by a long way it cleaned up quite well this was the rusty side and we can see that it's branded uh, C White House and Sun so it's an English meat cleaver it's in great condition uh, I could have the little rust pitting marks on there probably would sand off really easily I just buffed it up on the wire wheel the handle's in really really good condition I did run a file just across the top just to remove the slight burr but it's a nice example I checked eBay and they sell quite well uh, in fact I think I saw four sold and every one of them was over fifty dollars and one was around about a hundred I'm going to, going to value that at fifty five dollars uh, if we get offered 50 which is likely to be the case we'll take it but there we go prices as mentioned pretty much flip over the page a bit more and a total 445 dollars worth of stuff uh, and everything yeah was a lot of low value stuff the victor spark plug tool which i put over here uh, i did see one sell on ebay for 95 dollars quite a few sold for around the 50 to 60 mark well not there wasn't a lot of them but there would have been probably half a dozen so they're quite sought after but this one i think that end of the wire has either been damaged or it's not supposed to have that much of a curl in it and it's a little bit rough at the end there so if i get 25 dollars for that i'm happy nice little bonus there the other little bonus we found was a vegemite jar now this was just one of the jars that had nails in it but it's probably a 1950s jar marked Vegemite on the base and the original lid. I just put $5 on that. So that will be another little sale out of that uh, hardware lot. So, all right, $445. Not bad for our first pickup from this place. And really, we just picked up all the junky bits. So that'll be the end of this episode. Uh, we've been through um, pretty much just what we pulled out of the van on the first trip, as I mentioned. Uh, there's still a few other things to go through which I'll add them to future parts I don't know how long this series will go I know you guys like seeing the valuations and the notepad so I'll probably keep doing it all this stuff is going to be in the shop on the weekend and hopefully we move a fair bit of it fairly quickly all those garden tools or anything we'll just put right at the front of the shop we'll probably have the footpath quite crowded but hopefully it's a busy weekend and we move a lot of it so we still also have that those old films that we'll get to down the track few other bits in the van that I'll include in the next episode. And tomorrow, I think I'll probably film again as I take the trailer round to the property, clean up some of the scrap metal in the yard. We'll pick up the lawn mowers. We'll have to do some videos on those as well. So there's lots going on. Catch you in the next episode. Bye for now.